So I get up there and the first pitch I throw, like shin guard still on, touch 90. And I'm like, man, I didn't even like really let it eat there. So you step on the mound that prior weekend, you throw a bullpen for your coach on a Monday. On a Wednesday, you're getting scouted as a pitcher. Yes, and it was honestly really crazy too because uh, I would definitely say I see myself as a, a back end guy. I, I think that I'll be the next Mason Miller. Out to center. This is cranked. It's way back. And it's gone. Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I have on Grant Nip, who is the Seattle Mariners sixth round pick in the 2024 MLB draft. Grant has a wild story as he was drafted as a two-way player out of Campbell University. Through 22 games, he led the country in home runs, RBIs, and slugging percentage as a hitter. And after impressing coaches in a bullpen session last fall, he stepped on the mound for Campbell this year. And after being drafted as a two-way player by the Mariners, they have transitioned him from catcher to DH. And they are also focusing now on developing him as a pitcher in the bullpen. And as Grant states, his goal now is to become a back-end closer, similar to the story of Mason Miller. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're watching this episode on YouTube. And if you're listening to the audio-only version, make sure to leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform. And this podcast is sponsored by myself. I am a mortgage loan advisor, mortgage broker full time. If you're thinking of buying, selling or refinancing in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to reach out to myself, the couch GM or visit brokerconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. This podcast is also sponsored by Black Label Supplements. Make sure to check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code couchgm for 15% off your order. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, Grant, thank you for joining me. First off, congratulations on being drafted by the Seattle Mariners, sixth round of the 2024 MLB draft. Really looking forward to hearing your story and a bit more about you. Um, let's start with, with draft day. And what was that day like for you and that overall experience? Oh uh, man, it was, it was hectic. Uh, you know, like a lot of draft stories are, um, just kind of hanging out with the family and some friends, uh, playing a little bit of pool, uh, just sitting there and then finally getting a call. I actually got a call before, um, the Mariners, uh, was expecting to get picked before that, uh, by a different team and then sitting there, didn't end up getting picked. Um, so you kind of feel like the, it was like the air got sucked out of the room. Um, and then we're, just sitting there playing pool again, actually. Uh, and then I got the call from the Mariners. Um, and Ty Hall of the, the area scout over in North Carolina actually texted me uh, right before and said, I hope you're watching the draft. So I kind of knew it was finalized at that point. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. And then since the draft, you know, what have the next steps been? Have you been starting, starting to work out at, at the Mariners facilities? What, what does that all look like? Oh, yeah. So we got here. Um, we actually, it was kind of crazy, like two days after flying out here. And actually, my flight got canceled in Charlotte. Um, so I got, got out here a day later than everybody else. There were some, some guys that were with me. Uh, but we got out here a, a day later than everybody else. So I had to run through everything uh, pretty quick. And then basically got right into uh, draft camp, started doing, um, especially for me, trying to figure out, am I going to do my throwing program today? Am I hitting today? Uh, just kind of doing a little bit of everything, uh, trying to definitely – leaning more towards like with the pitchers just because like they wanted me to get um, more instruction when it comes to pitching just because it's so new to me. Um, but definitely trying to figure out uh, what what can I do um, to help me continue my success? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you don't hear it every day that there's, a, you know, a two way player, especially with with your capability with the home runs and the RBIs that you had in, in college up until up until your injury. And then also you step on the mound and are hitting a hundred. Uh, have you hit hundred? I haven't, I haven't actually hit triple digits yet, but it's coming okay. soon. Yeah. So during the combine, you know, what did that look like? You know, cause did they have different days for the position players versus the pitchers? Was it on the same day that you had to hit and pitch? What did that, all that look like? Mine was actually on the same day. So we flew in another, I don't know what it is with flights with me. I guess they love to get delayed or canceled. <laughs> Um, got delayed a lot. I ended up getting into Phoenix around probably 1.30. Uh, got to the hotel, uh, had to get up at like 6.30, get breakfast, um, get over to the field actually for BP. Uh, so then I had BP and then I actually was able to go back to the hotel, um, get a little nap in before I had to go back over. I was actually the last bullpen that day. Uh, so I had hitting in the morning and then pitching, pitching later in the evening. Man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting more into um, some of the post-draft and all that. Let's go back to your, your childhood, how you got into sports initially. Walk me through where you grew up, 
you know, what sports you were playing and interested in, what players you were watching, and kind of your progression uh, at that stage. Right. So I uh, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, um, lived there my whole life, uh, and kind of played a little bit of everything, honestly. I used to play lacrosse, I swam, I played football, I played basketball, um, kind of played a little bit of everything, just trying to figure out what was what fit me the most. Um, and then got to about middle school, I stopped playing everything except baseball about my seventh grade year, just because I felt like I could really have a future um, in baseball. Kind of matured a little bit earlier than everybody else, so kind of was a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily like bigger or anything, but you could tell I was a little bit more mature on the field. Um, so kind of got like recruited early and everything like that. Um, but yeah, it, I played everything um, and then stopped playing just so I could really focus on baseball. So you start only playing baseball. Um, so at that time, were you a catcher and a pitcher? Or it sounds like you're yes. relatively new to pitching? Uh, yeah, so I caught, I, I pitched a little bit. Um, I would catch mostly though. Um, I actually stopped pitching when I committed to Alabama out of high okay. school um, just so I could really like really focus on developing as a catcher. Yes, yeah, so walk me through that. You know, what was it like in high school, the recruiting process? committing to Alabama, and then making the move eventually to Campbell? Yeah, so uh, recruiting process was awesome. I got recruited real early, so it was pretty cool at a young age. I got on, I was probably 15 or 16, um, going on these big campuses, getting to visit those big campuses. Um, so it was pretty sick, like pretty cool, just uh, being a young guy walking around on those campuses, being able to see everything um, like that. So got recruited super early, committed to Alabama, um, got to Alabama um, and decided kind of I really wanted to redshirt just because I was like 200, 190, 200 pounds, uh, wanted to develop in the weight room and then also just continue to develop um, as a catcher. Uh, so then redshirted and then decided to make the move to Campbell um, because I felt like I really need to develop further as a catcher. Um, so I ended up making that move. I actually committed to a guy named Tyler Shoemaker. Uh, who actually, I never even actually got to work with him. He actually left before I ever even got there um, and went to Vanderbilt. And then we ended up getting a guy named Joey Holcomb, who came from NC State. Uh, he did a great job with me, um, put me in a one knee down stance, which, which was what I was actually looking for, uh, just as a bigger guy, 6'3", now 230 pounds. Like, it's pretty hard to stay in the traditional stance uh, for me. So I was able to get lower to the ground, actually became a lot better receiver um, and, just being able to throw, block, and receive out of out of one stance was was great for me. Now, does that one knee stance allow guys to frame pitches better, like bring pitches up out of the bottom of the zone? Is that kind of the mindset, or is it just to get you more off of your knees to to help with the wear and tear? I would say a little bit of both. Um, definitely 162 game season, or even in college, uh, like my sophomore, our redshirt sophomore year, I caught 55 games in a not in a row. So I actually. Our backup catcher uh, got hurt, and then I ended up having just to catch the rest of the season. I think I caught like 33 games in a row, um, so it was pretty crazy. Like wear and tear was off, obviously there, um, but I think it, was, it definitely just put me in a better position um, to re receive pitches, block, and even throw. So, and then up to that point, um, you know, were you watching baseball gr growing up? Were there certain players that you were looking up to? Was you know Buster Posey one of your your big guys that you were watching and, and was there a catcher that you were watching in the major leagues that you wanted to aspire to, be, to become? Honestly, um, we would, my dad used to take me down to the Louisville baseball games. Um, so, and I didn't even really know any of the players names. I just kind of <laughs> would be like, Hey, I want to be like that guy or whatever. Um, so we actually, our families are kind of, we know Will Smith, uh, the catcher for the Dodgers. Okay. Um, so that's a guy I've kind of always looked up to when it comes to the catching side of things. Um, just because, I mean, it's pretty cool to see like his journey of how he ended up being a catcher because he wasn't even catching um, when he was in high school. He was actually, I want to say he was a shortstop um, and then ended up transferring over to a catcher. And now he's a, one of the best big league catchers out there. So, yeah, he's hitting tons of home runs like yourself. Um, yeah. So you mentioned you make the move to Campbell as it states here, 55 games, you made 53 starts behind the plate that year. Um, and then you head into 2024 and you just have a monster season. You were leading uh, the country through 22 games with 18 home runs, 46 RBIs and slugging percentage. And then you, you had an injury. Walk me through this year at Campbell that started that season. You were on an absolute tear. Right. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy, honestly. Like I look back on it now and I'm like, man, it was just like 
it was like literally like video game numbers. <laughs> um, so it, it was pretty cool. It was like every time I, I it was the most confidence I've ever had playing, um, walking up to the plate. Like I was like, man, I know I'm about to get a barrel right here, regardless of if it's a hit or not. Like I know I'm about to like hit something really hard. Um, so it was just it was really cool, honestly. And it, now, like looking back on it, it's like, man, I don't even feel like it really happened. Um, but it, it was pretty cool. It's pretty special. Are you an analytics type guy? Are you looking at the, the metrics or is it more of like a feel? Do they have that technology at Campbell that, you know, allow you to adjust certain things to try to chase these different analytics or what's your approach with that? Right. So uh, we do, we do, we have uh, the track man and everything like that. Um, so actually when we would hit BP or, or whatever it was, we always talked about like our 90th percentile. So if you're my max exit below was like 116 or 117. Um, so we always like I was trying to chase my 90th percentile. So obviously hitting off a BP arm, trying to hit a ball 104 plus every time was pretty challenging. Um, but it was definitely something I look forward to just because it was it was honestly it was a challenge for me just because obviously hitting BP, it's a lot harder to hit a ball uh, 104 plus. So, yeah. And then, you know, in, in college, at what point did you start getting back on the mound and taking strides at, from uh, from that side of it? Right. So it's actually it's kind of funny. Um, I was playing summer ball for the Sanford Mainers after my redshirt sophomore year. Um, and I would just be up there like messing around with the guys up there and be like, man, I want to pitch again. Like I haven't <laughs> pitched in so long. Like I just miss pitching. Um, and I was always like I told our coaches up there, I was like, we ever get up big, like let me get on the mound. Um, and that that never ended up happening. But uh, I went back to school um, and I actually this I don't even know if I've act ever even really told anybody this part but i threw a bullpen um so this not this past fall so two falls ago i threw a bullpen just messing around um I actually had one of the other catchers catch me uh in the indoor and then i never threw a bullpen again from then um and then this past fall i was messing around so i was catching in an inner squad and i was throwing down a second i was like man it feels really good today like it's coming out i could tell it's really like have true flight down the second um, so I was down in the bullpen warming some guys up, warming up, up a couple freshmen. Um, and I was like, Hey, like, what do y'all think I could hit off the mound? And they were like, dude, you'll at least hit 90. And so like, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking like, I wonder if, even if I could touch 85 anymore. So I get up there and the first pitch I throw like shin guard still on touch 90. And I'm like, man, I didn't even like really <laughs> let it eat there. Um, so I let a few more go and I ended up getting up to 96 in the bullpen. And so this would have been on a Saturday. Um, and then, so I threw a bullpen in front of our pitching coach on Monday and then scout day was Wednesday. And that's when I was up to 98 at scout day. Scout day, as in the day that the scouts from all the big teams are coming to your practice, that's yes. when you just decide to, so you step on the mound that prior weekend, you throw a bullpen for your coach on a Monday on a Wednesday, you're getting scouted as a pitcher. Yes. And it was honestly really crazy too, because so it's our scout day is it's typically like an inner squad. So we're having an inner squad and all of a sudden I'm just busting out to the mound and I'm just throwing a bullpen like in the middle of the inner squad. Wow. <laughs> um, so I'm sure all the scouts were like, what in the world is going on? But it was it was it was pretty cool because I was up on the mound. I threw my first pitch and I think it was maybe like 94 or something. I threw my next one and I was up to like 97. And then all of a sudden, like I just see all the phones and all the radar guns coming out. <laughs> Uh, so it was pretty cool to stand up there and see that because it was all right in front of me. Were there guys on your pitching staff that were hitting 97? Uh, this this past year, we had one other guy um, who could run it up there, Derek Vartanian, who was our Friday night guy. Uh, but it was pretty funny because all the pitchers were, were pretty like – they were like mad but like <laughs> pretty cool about it. They are like, man, I've worked all my life to be a pitcher and I only throw 94. Uh, so I thought it was pretty funny whenever they were all saying that. That's insane. That's awesome. Do you have any off-speed pitches that you're working with? I do. So I throw, and honestly, so this is kind of a cool story as well. I, I learned to throw a Vulcan change um, actually while I was up playing in Sanford uh, in Summer Bowl. I was actually catching a guy named Ryan Butler who played at Liberty, and actually he just transferred to Ohio State because um, T-Rob, who was Tyler Robinson, who was at Campbell, went to Liberty. Um, then when Coach Hare left and went up to Ohio State, T-Rob ended up going with him. Um, so now Ryan's going to Ohio State with him as well. But uh, I was catching his changeup in games, and I'm like, man, like you have a really, really good changeup, like a plus changeup. Uh, how do you throw it? And so he like started showing me the grip, 
Um, and so before games, we would just stand on the foul line, like just messing around. And I would throw a Vulcan chain with him. So whenever I started pitching, I was like, this is my go-to. I already know how to throw it. So let me just run with this one. Um, and then I also have, at first it was, I'd called it like a curveball, but now it's more people say it's a slurve. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a little, it's firmer than a slurve, I guess. It's like 82, 83. Um, so that's, the, those are the two pitches that I, my two off-speed pitches, but I can also – I feel like I pick up on pitches pretty quick. Um, so I can also throw a splitter, um, and I can also throw like a little cut, like gyro slider. We're here today at Dev's Coffee Bar in Battleground, Washington. They built this podcast studio. Shout out to Austin. And if you're like me and enjoy a nice caffeinated cup of coffee, then visit orderdevs.com. Use code COUCHGM for free shipping on your order. The blend of my choice is the deliciously optimistic blend. Definitely give this one a try. Now let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, it's always wild with with pitching specifically because like you look at the Seattle Mariners, guys in a bullpen will see someone throw a certain pitch and it's like, hey, how do you grip that? And then in their next bullpen, they just try it out. If you have that, if you just get that one feel on that one pitch, these guys are coming up with new pitches like all the time. It's ridiculous. Right. The Mariners, you know, added it. Everyone added in a two seam a couple years ago. This last off season, it was the splitter. Bryce Miller, just learned a uh, knuckle curve from Mike Bauman, uh, Bowman, who was on the team briefly. So the progression of being a pitcher, you know, you've been a pitcher for relatively a short amount of time from last fall ball to this year to now, you know, in, in pro ball as a two-way player. Um, I'm really excited to see your progression and how that, that, that grows. Yeah. How, how do they have you working out right now? You mentioned that you're doing more pitching. What does that look like from a day-to-day -day basis? Are you still getting some catcher work in, or is it mainly like, hey, let's let's look at you as a pitcher? So I'm actually, I guess you could say I'm a retired catcher now. I'm actually uh, okay. in more of a DH pitcher role as of okay. right now. So I don't know. That could end up being maybe a first base type role um, in pitching. Um, but, but as of right now, it's just a, a DH pitcher role. So it's actually a pretty cool life, honestly. Yeah, it makes sense to keep you off your legs, you know, keep you healthy for, for when you're on the mound. For sure. So, so you're on a pitcher progression. Um, yeah, what has that experience been in the Mariners system so far? The Mariners pitching development is very highly spoken of, and they've produced some some solid guys over the past few years specifically. What has that been so far, that experience? Oh, it's been awesome. So Matt Pierpont, um, one of the pitching guys, he actually, like, we got to sit down and have all these meetings, um, kind of like showing you the foundation of the, the organization and everything when it comes to the pitching side. Um, and when I had my one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, he was kind of like, what's well, one thing that's really stuck out to you when it comes to the pitching so far? And I was like, honestly, everything, because I, I don't know a whole lot when it comes to the pitching side of things. Um, so just all the numbers they were throwing at me and everything like that, um, it was really cool to see. Like, we got to take notes during all of it, so I still look back at those notes, and I'm like, man, like, it's pretty cool. Like, one of the really cool things that stuck out to me was um, 90, like, on OO pitches, 94% of the pitches – um, something good happens for you as a pitcher. But a lot of people only really look at the 6% of the bad things. Like, oh, I threw an OO fastball and the dude hits it, hits it out of the park or whatever. Um, but 94% of the time, it's going to go good for you. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I was like, all right. They basically tell us, like, hey, let's throw the, the OO pitch, like, hard of the plate. Just throw it right down the middle. Um, so that's kind of one thing that was surprising to me because, honestly, like, I remember being on the mound – um, that's kind of what I try to do. Like, I wasn't really trying to go corner to corner. Um, I was just trying to let my, like my fastball play over the middle of the middle of the zone, let my breaking ball do what it needs to do and everything like that. Just trying to throw it right down the middle. So, yeah, that really is the key is, is throwing strikes. And you look at, as you were describing, you know, the splits between going Oh, one to one Oh, the results of the, the rest of that plate appearance are significant. And, you know, as you mentioned, you're not going to be facing George Springer every time to where if you do throw a heater down the middle, he's taking a yard, you know, 96% yeah. of the time, it's probably going to be in your benefit. H have they kind of worked in some new pitches for you as well? Or is it just kind of, you know, the, the rest of the pitchers that are in, in the development with you? Are you guys feeding off of each other, sharing tips? Oh, yes, for sure. I haven't actually, so I haven't thrown any bullpens at all. I won't throw any okay. actually while I'm here. Um, just kind of getting into the flow of everything, um, just kind of feeling out everything. Uh, just right as of right now, just sticking with the the three pitches that I have. Um, 
But definitely they said once we start throwing bullpens and everything like that, they'll throw some stuff at us, different grips and everything like that um, to try to start working on. Because honestly, that's one big thing that I've wanted to do. Um, so my fastball obviously has been up to 98 and then my breaking ball is around like 82, 83. So it's a 15 mile an hour difference. Um, so I'd like to be able to throw like if I could throw like the, the gyro slider, like right around 90. Um, I think that would benefit me a lot, honestly. Yeah. And um, our, our guys like Gerangelo and uh, Ryan Sloan down there also at the other draft picks. Yes, they are. So the, a bunch of so everybody is actually here. Um, there was actually, I think, seven guys or six or seven guys got chipped off. Today, they actually went to Modesto. Um, okay. So right now, I don't know, there's probably 18 of us that are here. Um, so just doing, we're just doing like our typical throwing program. Some guys are still kind of building, building up because they're going to end up going um, to Modesto or, or someplace like that as well. Yeah. How has been being a, a, a catcher your entire life helped you on the mound with being able to pitch uh, tunneling and sequencing and all those different things? A ton for sure. Like definitely like you don't want to be the catcher that's sitting back there and the guy that's trying to nitpick and throwing a bunch of balls, walking a lot of guys. So like getting up on the mound, I'm thinking the same thing. Like, man, I don't want my catcher sitting back there for a while. So let's just attack this guy and go right at him. And if something bad happens, it happens, but I'd rather them beat me than me beat myself. So. Yeah. And are there specific pitchers in the league or are you watching more pitching tape now that you're on this side of it to where you're trying to, to look for things or, guys that you aspire to shape pitches after um honestly i haven't really done a to like a whole lot of um like video just looking at different guys but i'll definitely start looking at the the starting or the rotation for the mariners just because they've i think it's five of the six starters or guys who have they actually developed in their in the organization um which is awesome to hear just because like that's kind of the stepping stones that i want to take um being the guy who develops in the organization and make it, makes it to the big leagues um, as a pitcher. So it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone outside of Luis Castillo, you know, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, uh, Brian Wu, Bryce Miller, Emerson Hancock, they they were all drafted in the past four years and developed through their system and have had great success. Do you see yourself as being in that, that back end, back into the bullpen type role, or have you thought about, have they thought about being as a potential starter or is it really out of the bullpen? Uh, I would definitely say I see myself as a, a back end guy. Honestly, I've, I told my buddy this actually today. I was like, man, like I really I was like, this is crazy to say, but I see myself as the next like the next Mason Miller, um, honestly, just because like I think the development for me is going to be awesome. And I think my velo is going to tick up um, and I think my stuff is already like honestly really good. Um, so I think I think that's where I'll be. Um, I, I think that I'll be the next Mason Miller. Yeah, that's a great pitcher to aspire to to become. I mean, his story sure. is insane. You know, with his diabetes, he learned that he had diabetes, and then he packed on the weight, the velocity. Same, same with yourself. In the fact that you know, it's uh, it's been relatively late to you stepping on the mound, and your progression now that you're focusing on it completely, you know, might have that same type of of escalation. Um, yeah. What are you most What are you most looking forward to? over the next, you know, two months and then over the next year? Uh, definitely just the the development side of things. Like I'm super excited just to develop more um, as a pitcher and even as a hitter. I think one thing that'll be really cool is once I actually throw a bullpen. Um, so we have a machine here called a traject. Um, so it basically projects a, the pitcher up on the board. Like you can hit off whoever you want. Um, you can hit off Jacob deGrom and all those guys. Um, and, and it actually goes through their motion and it comes out. Um, it's actually, it's a $600,000 machine. So it literally, it shows the, like, it's the exact movement, movement of every pitch they have. Um, so once I throw a bullpen, they said, they'll actually put me up on the traject and I'll get the oh, wow, okay. myself. So I was like, oh, that'll be pretty cool. Have you already faced some guys on that, off that machine? I have. So I, I did face the Grom, um, <laughs> and it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, especially his, I didn't realize his arm slots a lot lower, um, than what you would think. So his, his fastball, uh, it only rides at about 17 inches, 17, 18 inches, but from his arm slot, it makes it look like it's like 22. And even when you know where the, what pitch is coming and where it's going, it's, I imagine it's still pretty tough to hit. Right. It is for sure. Especially when it's 99 to 101. Have you, have you faced Munoz off the machine yet? I have not. I have not. Okay. Yeah. I heard of 
guys that were stepping in against Munoz off the machine. And I mean, that's just insane. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It's probably by far the coolest machine I've ever hit off of. Um, I want to, the next person I want to face is Skeens because I want to, I want to see oh, yeah. that one. So his, his splinker that he has with his hundred miles an hour. And he's got the uni unique arm slot also. He's kind of off to the side and I mean, he's lights out right now. Right. It's crazy. What, what do you do in your spare time when you're not playing baseball, when you're trying to just relax and, and not think about baseball? Oh uh, yeah. So here it's honestly, it's, it's, it's a lot different because everything's in the morning. Um, and then we finish and it's like, man, like I have 10 hours until it's time to go to sleep. Like, what do I do? <laughs> uh, so I've kind of, you know, like the video games, obviously NCAA football just came out. So, so playing that a little bit, um, but then it kind of gets old. So it's like, man, like I don't want to sit here and play video games for four hours. Like, what do I do now? Um, so, honestly, like, I, I love to play golf, but nobody wants to play golf in 110-degree weather here. Um, so, I get that one, too. Uh, so, honestly, it's kind of just, like, sit and chill. Like, maybe scroll on TikTok for a little bit, kind of just trying to figure out, like, little different things that you can do, um, like, around the apartment or whatever. I got a scooter that I'll go ride uh, randomly. So, it's just kind of figuring out little different things you can do that to kind of pass by time. Absolutely. Are you an MLB the show guy? I used to be, I used to be, but I, I had a 99 overall team in season one and then they changed it to season two and you can't even use those guys. And I was like, man, I don't even want to play anymore. Now I got to rebuild my whole team. Yeah. That's definitely a grind. And yeah, yes. that's the same type of thing. Yeah. And then NCAA football comes out and then you start playing that. You don't got the time for, for everything. Right. Well, cool. Really appreciate your time. Really looking forward to watching you progress over these next few years and really cool story that you have so far with the two way. I mean, that's just not a common thing anymore. Um, outside of Shohei, there's Jack Caglione that was out of University of Florida. Really excited to see you progress. And yeah, again, really appreciate your time to hear your story and looking forward to seeing where, where you go. Yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Out to center. This is great. It's way back.